Welcome, welcome, Be Holy, Be Perfect community. Thank you for tuning in and bless you. May the Lord bless you with health. May the Lord bless you with healing. May the Lord deliver you from any type of spirit of infirmities, any type of sickness, any type of diseases in the name of Jesus. For Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, all that were sick, all that was uh, infirm, all that had the problem of mental health. God healed them. Jesus healed them. And he is still in the heal healing business. Receive healing from the Almighty. Receive healing from the Almighty in Jesus' name. We continue to talk about the servant of light and the servant of darkness. And we are in First John. We are in First John. We are in the epistles of First John. We know that John wrote the letter, his letters to a mixed community. Uh, and when we say mixed community, it had a diversity of people that was there. Uh, the Messianic Jews, uh, converts from the Gentiles or nation. Gentiles actually mean nations. So we are going to stay with that again. We have to understand that he's talking about what he has heard, what he has seen, and what he has touched. These are three um, categories of things that we need to make sure that we do in our service to the Lord. We must hear, we must see, and we must touch the Lord. We must hear, we must see, and we must touch the Lord in our life in Christ Jesus. He said a final hour, the final hour, will I be found holy and acceptable to God? In this final, final hour of the whole world, will we be acceptable to God? 1 John 2.18, 1 John 2.18. As you know that he have been teaching to different categories uh, or different levels of Saints, he's talking to the boys now, the last, it is the last time, hour, the end of this age. And as you have heard that the uh, Antichrist, he who will oppose Christ, the Messiah, Messiah, he who will oppose the Messiah in the guise of Messiah is coming. Even now, many anti-Messiahs have arisen, which conformed confirm our belief that it is the final end times, that it is the final hour. And we see this now. Now let's uh, just say this. What do it mean to be the Antichrist, the Antichrist, the Anti-Messiah? What do that mean? Uh, <laughs> well, it means several different things. It means that we can live a life that it against Christ, against the teachings of Christ, against the life of Christ, against the uh, lordship of Christ. So the antichrist, uh, the anti against Christ, against the anointing, um, the anointed one is when we speak uh, negatively about the manifestation of the Holy Spirit that is against Christ. Now, we need to understand that what, how we live, we can live to have a form of godliness and deny the power of God. That is a form of anti or being against Yeshua. So we need to understand these things and remember that he's talking to the boys and these uh, boys are at a different level than the father and the men. So we, we learn how the Lord works. He talked about the different 
uh, levels of understanding, the different levels or degrees of education that they have about Christ, about the uh, Christ and the Word of God. So we have to make that distinction too, that in a congregation, there are different levels and we have to deal with people on different levels and different understandings. First John 2 and 19, they went out, they went out from our numbers, but they did not really belong to us. For if they had been of us, they would have remained with us, but they withdrew that it might be plain that they are not of us. So when we are in an assembly with people that continue to talk about the Holy Ghost, say that the Holy Spirit have ceased, that's basically some blind person leading a blind, a person that has no understanding, a person that is being used to be against the word of God, against the truth of God. See, when we look at what anti, anti means against, it means uh, oppose. So when we have people oppose the uh, word of God, then that is a element of the antichrist or being against the anointed one, being against the anointed one. And when I say being against the anointed one, I mean being against the Godhead, being against the Godhead because Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and the Father is one. There is only one God, only one God. And so we see here that it is a time when the blind will lead the blind and then the blind would have people following them so that they will also be blind. They will be walking in darkness because when someone is against the anointed one, against the Father, against God, they are walking in darkness. <laughs> you can't be walking in the light and it is against God and, uh, and against his word. And so we have to look at what we do in our life and look at our surrounding, uh, our social group, uh, as we say today, our, our social group or our support, so-called support group. First John 2 and 20, first John 2 and 20, but you have been anointed, you have been anointed, you have been anointed by you hold a sacred appointment from, you have been a, given an unction from the Holy One, and you all know the truth, or you know all things, or you know all things. Now, when they say you know all things, that don't mean that you know everything, because no one know everything save the Lord God. Uh, what he's saying, he's saying that you know all the things that we have taught you thus far. You know all the things that we have taught you thus far. So he's speaking in a context, and we have to see this in context. But you have been anointed. Look, when we have the word, there is an anointing on the word of God. There is an anointing on the word of God. Listen to what I'm saying. There is an anointing on the word of God because it comes from God. It is God. And not only is there an anointing on the word, when we sit under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is what? The Holy Spirit is the anointer. He anoints us through Jesus Christ, through the Father. They are one. It is the Godhead. So when we are in union with the Godhead, we are anointed. We can be considered the anointed. Okay, that don't make us the Messiah. It means that we have an unction. We have an unction. We are made alive by this anointing. And so when we understand this, we can walk in that. We can walk in the light in the light, in the illumination of the word of God and in the anointing of God. The anointing is what? It is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. It is a manifestation of the presence of God. So when we have the presence of God, 
as you will learn, as we know that the anointing is in us. Why is the anointing in us? Because we are in Christ and Christ and Jesus, Yeshua, is in us. When we dwell in God, when we live in God, and what do it mean to live in God? Uh, to live in God means to be obedient to God's word, obedient to God's word. It means obedience. To live in God means to live under the government and lordship of the almighty God. Yes, yes, that's what I said. You know, that's what it means. First John 2, 21. First John 2, 21. I write to you not because you are ignorant and, and do not perceive and know the truth, but because you do perceive and know it and know what, and know the truth, and know positively that nothing false, nothing false, nothing false, no deception, no deception, no lie, no lie is of the truth. So people can't teach half the word and then contradict or be against the rest of it because what? That is not the truth. That is not the truth. Anything that denies the word of God is not truth. So to teach half truth, half truth, what did he say? Half truth, half truth is what? A lie. This is what he's saying. He's saying that half truth, half truth, nothing false, nothing false, nothing false, no deception, no lies is of the truth. So anything that is twisted it is not of the truth. And who is true? God is true. Who is true? The Lord It is true. Well, who is true? The word of God is truth. And there is no lie in the word of God. And so as we understand that, we will be enlightened by the word of God. We will be what? We will be anointed. And the anointing change us. The anointing makes us look different. The anointing the anointing conforms us, transforms us into the likeness and likeness and image of God. And that is the goal. That is the goal. This is why we are discussing holiness, because holiness, the separation set apart unto God, consecrated unto God, made sacred, made sacred, sacred. Can you imagine that? Sacred, sacred sacred you know where it, we used to walk in the sanctuary and everybody had to be quiet why because we was walking in the holy place we were walking in the presence of god everybody had to be quiet you had to kind of like tiptoe around because you didn't want to do anything to offend or desecrate the area where we call the the place of god but that's gone out of the window <laughs> yep it has gone out of the window and uh because we have put ourselves above God. We have no fear of God. Yes, that's exactly what I said. We have no fear of God. When we have the fear of the Lord, we will act differently, think differently, and believe differently. 1 John 2.22. Who is such a liar? <laughs> oh, boy. Look, I mean, you know, John is so plain. He just, what did he do? <laughs> He's always sending a rocket to set a person her on fire. He said, who is such a liar as he who denies that Jesus is the anointed one, the Messiah? He is the Antichrist. He is against Christ, the antagonist of the anointed one who habitually denies and refuse to acknowledge the Father and the Son. So what do it means to acknowledge the Father and the Son? It means to conform to the image of the Lord God Almighty. It means to be what he created us to be. It means to be who we were in the, the loins of Adam before he sinned. So that's what that means. First John 2, 23, no one who habitually denies this on the son even has the father. Whoever confesses, acknowledge, and has the son has 
the Father also. So he's making a distinction here. All we have to do is write it down, put draw a line between what what is truth and what is a lie, what side of the 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 uh, line we're on, and we we'll know exactly where we are with God, where we are with Christ. See, you know, you see this guy, he, his, his nose, even when he lies, his nose grows, you know. And look, when we lie, you know, our soul and our spirit is stained, is contaminated, is polluted. When we sin, it's twisted. We become twisted in all areas of our life, spirit, soul, and body. So we should be careful. We should be careful. When we really can see what sin is, we should be uh, have um, an, uh, a fear of sin and when i say a fear of sin a fear where we are like a like a, a hot stove we we once we touch it we know that it's hot and we uh avoid it <laughs> we make sure we avoid it you know that's what sin is it's like a coals of fire and so we should avoid the coals of fire it is uh such a wonderful thing to know that we can simply uh, follow John here. And by following John here, you know, when we were kids, we had to write certain things on a piece of paper, the pros and the cons, the advantages and disadvantages. So when we want to identify who we are in Christ or if we are against Christ, all we have to do is draw a line between what this epistle, this what John is saying, those that walk in truth and those that walk in darkness, those that walk in the light, which is true, and those that walk in lies and manipulation, which is the servants of darkness, the sons and daughters of disobedience. So we have this line. We can draw this line. And we can have a scale. We can even use a scale with the Lord saying we will be weighed in the balance. And that weighed in the balance is all is what is ever in the what is ever is truth and whatever is false. And we draw the line between those and whatever is associated with truth. We write that under that line and whatever is not associated with truth, we write that under that line. Uh and we will see exactly where we are. And now uh, that can be used to examine ourselves and examine where we are in the faith if we are really even in the faith. So those are simple, simple uh, ways to see where we are in Christ. So the Lord always say, examine yourself to see if you are truly in the faith. And we should do that. I pray uh, that we are all in the faith. I pray and if we're not, is that we repent and accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, you know, to love God with all our heart, all our mind, and all our being. All our being means with all our limbs, our mouth, our ears, our eyes, you know, all of that should be sanctified. And so, Father, we just thank you and we praise you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Teach us and cause us to walk and live in truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless the Lord.